Hello everybody, my name is Shalise. Welcome on everybody to my Assassin's Creed rank of the protagonist. There are 11 Assassin's Creed characters from the main consoles. I'm not including Aya. Aya was not a main character. I'm not including Lydia Fry. I'm not including Ada Wale. I'm not including Aveline. I'm not even including Hatem. These are not main characters for the Assassin's Creed. Even though I could argue, people could argue Hatem could be a main character. But to me, Aya barely had like 5, 10 minutes of her playing. Lydia Fry was like a side DLC. Out of wallet, Avalyn, not main console, and neither was he. I hate them, but I would say would be the only argument, but reality, he's not the main character. We're including only the main characters for an Assassin's Creed franchise, so let's start off with the worst. The worst to me is Bayek. Yes, before people start biting my heads off, here's the thing. Assassin's Creed Origins had a terrible plotline. How they portray Bayek, here's the thing. Bayek in a book, amazing character. How they build him up, amazing why they didn't do the book version of the video game, I have no idea why. And that book is not based off the video game. It is not. Well, it's not a complete cut, a copy and paste of the video game. Bayek as a character, I enjoy. I enjoy Bayek. I understand where he lost his son and he's out for revenge. But how the game portrayed him losing it, like surviving all this shit, is just ridiculous. And people say, well, it's a video game. No, there are things in video games you could do and certain things are logical in Assassin's Creed world. And I could give you three examples of how Bike survived. You got the one where he's unconscious and after they hit him with a rock and they thought he was dead. Then there was his head in the freaking desert. And then there was the DLC where he was rope crucified instead of nail crucified. Do I have to go into uh, why they ruined Bike's character and his freaking plot armor? I also didn't like the fact that Bike was constantly saying, You killed my son to every single Order Ancients he met, even though he never, some of them had nothing to do with it. So to me, it's just like all the time, Bayek had just had the same dialogue for every single dang villain. Even though it was basically five villains that did it, that actually were it had, took part in that shit. And it's just stupid. It's just really stupid how they portrayed Bayek in the video game. Bayek's a good character, but how the game was doing with him and how they portrayed him out through the story, it's just eh. So Bayek, number 11. And no, he was not the founder of the Brotherhood. Screwed uh, Origins for that stupid thing. Number 10, Arno. Yes, Arno from Assassin's Creed Unity. I do have appreciation for Arno. I like the fact that he's a man who's constantly uh, looking up to his father figures, whether it's Bellic, his actual father, or Mr. Lasser. He was always trying to get approval from somebody. He was always trying to give approval from his father, in some cases his stepfather, or just in case of Balek, he was formed in the Brotherhood. He was technically not raised in the Brotherhood, but he, the Brotherhood gave him a family in a sense. But ultimately, what I don't like about Arno was the fact is that he eventually goes back to the Brotherhood at the end. They kick him out. To me, Arno would have been a much better interesting character. Him and Lisa would have been better characters in general. If they say, F the Templars, F the Assassin Order, we're going to have our own life. Screw this shit. But no, he goes back to them after they kick him out, after he was the only buddy doing anything in France. So, I'm sorry, the plot line for Arnold was higher a bit. It, at least it was a, with Bike, it was like bumpy road, like do 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 do. With Arnold, it's like, okay, he's slowly climbing up, and then he goes back to the assassins and down. But Arnold has a little bit more consistency with his character, at least for his storyline. But Arnold, not my favorite character, number 10. Number nine, I'm going to give to Connor. Connor, I enjoy a bit more than uh, Arno and Bike, not as personality-wise, but what he's actually done in the video game. He helped rebuild the Assassin Order. But I gotta admit, this guy has plot armor just as much as Bike. I mean, certain cases where, you know, where Connor was trapped in a cage and hate them and the Templars didn't execute him outright, it's just Bond villain fantastic mustache shit. It's just stupid. But I can respect Connor for trying to get revenge, trying to help his people. He's a man who's conflicted with also not only getting revenge on Charles Lee and the people who destroyed his village, but he also has conflict of where his village is going, about whether he's a part of his own people anymore. So there was a little bit more interest into me and Connor's character than uh, Arnold Bayek, and overall as a completion of a story. Connor has a more completion of a story than Arnold Bayek, or at least a little bit more satisfying conclusion of his character. So to me, Connor, number nine. Number seven and eight, I'm going to give to the Fry Twins. Seven, I'm going to give to Evie. Eight, I'm going to give to Jacob. 
Jacob was this knuckle brawler, didn't really care for the assassin rules, but he becomes a fully fledged character in the Jack the Ripper storyline, which I do enjoy with him. It's just he's not overall the greatest protagonist. I do enjoy where his character was ending up, and he's a man full of regret at the end. But I prefer Evie over Jacob because Evie was always a little bit more curious about the assassin lore. She always was uh, fixing Jacob messes. She was always a st stricter for the brotherhood. And she had this little charm about her that made her kind of special. Together they were great together. They, the siblings worked well with each other and they played beautifully with each other. But if I had to choose, Evie's over Jacob and Jacob's over the other characters. So Jacob number 8, Evie number 7. Number 7, I'm going to get to Shea Patrick Cormac. Assassin turned Templar. He wiped out the colonial assassins. He stopped. He's the reason why Achilles got the limp and why Achilles is a broken down man in the assassin order. He gets Shea Patrick Cormac, a man who's trying to right the wrong of the past of the assassins, and he's working with the Templars to do it, and he eventually becomes a Templar. And I love about this different take of a man who will never betray a Templar order that we need order, we need structure, we can't have this uh, stuff. It, I, to me, Shea Patrick Cormac is a human being that is not going to allow. Uh, innocence be hurt by this is he like some people say well he's technically not a templar and also because you know templars are the mustache villains no the and templars in some cases they could be just as good, noble as assassins but they have an order they have a structure and in some cases we really saw a templar side and i really enjoy shay patrick cormax as a character i fell for him when he had to eliminate his assassin brotherhood he i fell for him when he had to eliminate the people he could was raised with, who he trained with, who was mentor to him. I loved a great deal about Shea Patrick Cormac. I think he was a great character. So Shea Patrick Cormac, number six. Number five, I'm gonna get to Avor or Ivor. Um, he's a guy from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. He, I, he's a guy version, and he is Odin. So yes, Odin was a male. So don't give me that stupid shit about the female and then like, oh, which one's the correct wonder? Is a canon character, and a canon character to me is the male version of Ava, of Odin. Eivor is just a man who is constantly conflicted with his brother, with Sigurd and all that stuff. He's a man who's always trying to help his community. He's a man who's trying to build up the community. He's trying to build alliances in England. He's trying to. He's constantly trying to fight destiny. What's destiny telling him? Oh, you're going to betray your brother. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. He's always trying to uh, go against destiny in the way it is. And he's going to make up his own life. He's going to make up his own choices. And that's something I could respect of Eivor. We do not get his conclusion totally at the end of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so I'm hoping the DLC will flesh out his character more. But Eivor right now could go higher, could go lower, but Eivor to me is now number five. Number four, I'm going to get to Altair. Altair, the book version, great character. Altair, the video game character, great character, but the book version does a lot more details. Altair was an assassin who didn't really follow the rules. He didn't give a shit about risking innocent lives. He was basically an asshole. Then he becomes wise, and he learns more about the rules again. He really becomes a full-fledged character. And his tragic story of him having his wife, a t former Templar uh, a, uh, worker, a, a former Templar mercenary who worked with the Templars, to his sons, to the ultimate death of his oldest son. And there's just so much great stuff I love about Altair's character, about what he's been through, and what he means for the Assassin Order, how he defended the Assassin Order. And ultimately, what's the difference between Assassins and Templars? Altair... Great character, number four, a savior of the Brotherhood, number four, Altair. Number three, and a lot of people are going to hate me for this, is Cassandra. I respect Cassandra as a character. Some people say, oh, it's an RPG character, so you can't really tell what her decisions were. Read a book, that's what our character is. My opinion. My opinion, everybody, read the books of Assassin's Creed to learn more about the lore, learn more about the characters, and to what's in their background. Cassandra as a character, I enjoyed. I enjoy Cassandra as a character. She was a, a young girl who basically lost her, lost her brother at a young age, was betrayed by her a man that she loved as her father, and it turns out her entire life has just been a lie, and she's on a journey, an odyssey, a long journey to find out her family. Where's her mother? Where's her brother? Where's her stepfather? All these little puzzles that, all these emotions that hit with her. She meets new friends along the way. She meets new alliances. She loses friends along the way. She loses family. She loses a little sister in Phoebe. And she grows as a character. She grows constantly. And I always enjoy Cassandra as a character. I think she is one of the best Assassin's Creed protagonists out there. Cassandra, badass female character. Awesome. Number three, Cassandra. Number two is Edward Kenway. I enjoy Edward Kenway. He is, could, I don't want to say he's spoiled, but he's a man full of ambition, full of greed, full of lust. 
He is a man who is uh, trying to make his own way in the world. He has his own rules. He follows his own luck. He's going to do what he wants to do. But all along the way, he still is a good man. He still has a heart of soul. He still believes in brotherhood. He still believes in friendship. And ultimately, he's a man who goes through a long journey of being a selfish brat in some cases. And ultimately becomes a man full of wisdom and a man full of regret and mistakes. But as we see in uh, the entire plot of Edward Kenway... It's just in Black Flag and his entire journey of becoming a pirate to a man who's lost everything to becoming an assassin was just beautifully breathtaking. And I loved Edward Kenway as a character. Edward Kenway, number two, love him. Number one is Ezio Auditore, the man who lost his brother and sister and uh, a man who lost his brother and his father in a horrific trial. Who grew up, to, uh, who became an assassin, training with Uncle Mario. Learning about all these different uh, people in his life. Becoming the future mentor of the Italian Brotherhood. To going to Constant uh, Constantinople. To losing love. To finding love. To uh, settling down to have peace. Ezio Auditore is the... If there's ever... There's the only one character that resembles the Assassin's Creed universe. And it's not Altair, the first character. It's not Tatum Kenway, the awesome Templar. James Bond kind of character. It's Ezio Auditore. The romantic Italian man. Trying to have a good time. We get the man, we get the boy who grew up to become a man, to a wise old mentor, to the protector of the brotherhood, and what we all want to be, an assassin. Not looking at just assassins as the good guys, not looking at, he's a man who questions his creed all the time. He's the ultimate hero, the ultimate protagonist, and I love Ezio Auditore. Ezio Auditore, number one for my assassin's creed protagonist. So yeah, everybody, what'd you all think? Do you think Bayek should have been a lot higher? Do you think Khan should have been down to the bottom? You think Avor should not have been so high? You think Cassandra should have been too high? Let me know. Let me just know, everybody. My name's Elise. I'm after everybody. Bye bye.